Welcome everyone uh, here at this Climate Cafe here in uh, Groningen. Uh, we're going to have a great session. Uh, we have uh, two guests here uh, being live so we can uh, interact. It's a bit different than we anticipated, so a lot of uh, things will happen on the floor. We have uh, Sandra here and Hannah, and we have Ilvi on the chat that will join later. Um, my name is Floris Bogaert. I'm a professor at the Hansa University uh, of Applied Science. I'm also an affiliated researcher at the Global Center of Adaptation, based here in Groningen, also an office in Rotterdam. And I'm also a consultant at uh, Deltares. Uh, I was meaning to be here with Minder de Vries from uh, VHL uh, Applied University. He actually uh, prepared uh, most of the sessions. He's somewhere in uh, Friesland uh, joining us on the Zoom. But uh, we both would like to welcome you to this session on Climate Cafe. And you might ask, what is a Climate Cafe actually? Well, it's an interdisciplinary uh, research education concept. Mostly we were in the field, but now because of Corona, it's a bit different. But this time we too choose to have a bit of digital way. So we're gonna have uh, input tangible uh, input uh, from uh, videos that we're going to watch. Three videos from uh, three universities. Uh, the RUG, uh, Groningen University, Applied Universities of Groningen and VHL. So um, uh, what else? We're going to uh, have a Q&A session. I can read the chat, so feel free. And I really hope you have questions if you see the videos that we can respond on here on the floor and have some interaction on the Zoom as well. That will be... Uh, uh, perfect. Um, something uh, you m actually don't know. Uh, we showed the videos all uh, to a jury as well. So a bit of more exposure for you because uh, yesterday we had the good news that we uh, have an approved Interact project with a lot of uh, stakeholders from this uh, Northeast region. So I, uh, at the end, I would like to share uh, with you and of course you uh, what kind of uh, feedback we will have from the video. So I hope that's nice. Don't be nervous. There's not a, a, a wide ranking on uh, on that part because it was really positive. I'm really excited as Mindert uh, about this uh, session. So uh, it's not about me talking. It's a youth uh, conference, of course. So maybe we can start with uh, Sandra. Maybe uh, you can tell something about yourself. We know that you're from the University of uh, Rug, of course, uh, but uh, who are you? Uh Yes, I am uh, Sandra. Um, as you said, I'm from De Rug, and I also represent my colleague uh, Sophie Lindemann. Together we do the Master uh, of Landscape History here in Groningen. And uh, this discipline uh, basically looks at man and how it deals with its surroundings throughout the ages. Because the landscape has uh, always posed so many challenges as man has wanted to settle somewhere. And in order to uh, be able to live somewhere, um, people have found solutions uh, as to how they could do that. And even today, we still um, have many of these challenges uh, that we have to overcome. And especially now that the climate is changing so much, uh, we have to look at these yes, new or maybe bigger challenges even. But by looking at how people uh, overcame all these things in the past, we can actually be inspired for the future. So that's what we hope to add to the debate. Perfect. Yeah, very good introduction. I think with no further ado, we can uh, go to the uh, first video and watch. And again, feel free to post questions on the Zoom so we can have an interaction here on the floor. Thank you. First video. The Lada Sea is a region formed by sea dynamics and tidal processes. For centuries, dikes have been considered the best solution to protect our lands from flooding. However, now that there's an end to how high dikes can be raised, a bitter truth is becoming a reality. Because of our strong dependence on dikes, we have become estranged from adapting to the coastal processes of the Wadden Sea. Prior to the dikes, the Wadden Sea inhabitants were masters in adapting to the sea dynamics and transforming the flood-rich landscape into a livable habitat. Let's have a look into the past. During the period of global warming, about 12,000 years ago, the coastline of the Northern Netherlands was regularly flooded with seawater due to sea level rise and the sinking of the mainland. 
Since 5000 BC, the Van Sea emerged as a tidal area due to a balance between the rise in sea level and the heightening of land through sedimentation. One result of the sea deposition is the development of a fertile salt marsh landscape along the coast. The first settlers have been attracted to these fertile grounds and used higher salt marsh surfaces to build their houses. They adapted to the sea dynamics and the tidal processes by adding artificial dwelling mounds, so-called Wirde, to the salt marshes. These dwelling mounds were not randomly built, they were carefully constructed using local materials to withstand the constantly wet conditions. This adaptation strategy was so successful that the mounds for individual farms grew into villages. The area was densely populated for its time. The history of the landscape shows that the inhabitants of the coast of the northern Netherlands worked with the natural entrances of the sea. Therefore, the old strategy of allowing and adapting to tidal processes should be kept in mind when preparing for the future. We can already see a shift back to these adaptation strategies which allow the sea to enter designated floodplains. Take, for example, the pilot project for a double dike. An area within two dikes will be connected to the sea by a sluice and can be regularly flooded. This way, it functions as an intertidal zone and accommodates the increasing amount of seawater. In addition, it also offers opportunities for saline agriculture on the accrued sediments and for the ripening of clay, which can be used to maintain the dikes. To conclude, when we think about protecting our land from the sea, dikes are the first thought that comes to mind. However, to prevent catastrophic flooding in the future, we must allow the sea to enter the land rather than fight it. Therefore, we need to incorporate past adaptation strategies like the Wierde into future climate adaptation plans. Welcome back. It's a very inspiring uh, video and, and great footage as well, with, uh, made with a drone. Do you have your own drone, uh, Sandra? No, no, no. We have uh, Mark Schuurman to thank for that. <laughs> made some really, really perfect. Videos. Yeah. If there are any questions, please uh, drop them in the in the Zoom link so we can answer it. I don't see questions yet. So, uh, can I ask you, Sandra, how was it to make this video? Uh, it was a really uh, nice project to do because it it started as. Um, well, of course, you start to think about um, what we can add to the debates from our uh, our disciplines, so from the view of landscape history, and then also to be able to put that in a video to actually go uh, to the locations and um, try to really show the ways um, yeah. in, w in what we envision for the future. Uh, that was really nice to, to make. Yeah. Are, are you from the region yourself or? No, no, I'm not actually. I've only lived here for four years. Well, that's already four years maybe. Yeah. And I noticed that every time I go into the countryside, I notice new things and uh, the whole story from the history of the surroundings uh, are starting to be put together. And yeah. I really like to think um, from, the, from the whole line of the past, uh, how that will translate into the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And how, how about you, Hannah? You, you saw the video. Uh, what, what's your perception? What would you take from the video maybe uh, for your practice? Or maybe uh, maybe start with introducing yourself yeah. because <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows you're from Dortmund, for yeah, example. Exactly. So let, let's start with that. Yeah. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hannah. I'm 23. And last year I graduated in applied social psychology at the University of Groningen. And uh, yeah, together with uh, Thomas, Yuri, Snow and Jack Jan, um, I worked on a video as well. Um, it's about um, water related issues in an urban area. And um, uh, yeah, as the video before, we also were lucky to uh, um, have access to a drone, uh, which you will see later as well. And um, yeah, I'm very happy that we can share our work today and get you inspired and um, yeah, get you to take action and give you some new insights. Perfect. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, great. Well, I think uh, this is, of course, first video. You, you shortly introduced uh, what you're going to show. We're going to have a, a video in the middle as well, uh, being uh, introduced by uh, Ilfi, who's uh, here on the Zoom. We will give you the floor in a, in a minute. So, um, and maybe, uh, Sandra, uh, the, uh, you, you work together with Sophie. Uh, did she enjoy the whole project and making the video? Can you say something about that? Or <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I like to think so. No, no, she, she definitely did. Um, uh, yeah, we had a, a good um, 
cooperation. Yeah, yeah. a good cooperation. Yeah. We definitely worked well together. She's from Germany herself too. Okay. And um, it was really nice when we drove through the countryside to hear her perspective from it. Yeah. Because she's from an area that kind of looks like this, but still has many differences. And okay. that's very nice to, to hear about. Yeah, yeah, nice. Well, maybe maybe uh, uh, last before we go to the video of uh, VHL, what would be your uh, main message to the, to the public? Um, um, yes, so I've talked a lot about how we look at um, uh, the future from a historical perspective. Um, and what we actually try to communicate with the whole video and the whole storyline we try to make is that we should stop being so estranged from the coastal processes. Because um, since we diked ourselves in from the ocean, um, we, we are maybe very scared to live in an area where constant flooding would be normal. Uh, at least for me, that was a very foreign concept. Well, it's actually doable. And um, maybe we should start fighting the sea so much. So we should stop um, pushing it back and we should maybe allow some controlled flooding to happen in certain areas um, and we should start um, thinking of ways how we could live with that because that's not catastrophic flooding anymore that's just a way of living yeah very nice uh, message so that's uh, really good living with the water uh, something uh, we should do a lot more and that's actually one of the topics that we have in the new interact project and uh, 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 a lot of people were in the jury uh, showing your videos and really inspired uh, we're gonna watch the rest of course but i already can mention that uh, you will have a place in that project if you want to it's about germany and uh, and uh, the netherlands of course uh, the wadden say which we uh, just saw is not only the Netherlands it's even uh, stretching out to Denmark of course and a, a very good cooperation is very important and, uh, and you were invited to join that project but uh, I will tell something more about that so welcome Ilvi uh, uh, to, uh, to this we, we watched you. a great video of you <laughs> maybe you can give a short introduction about the video and the message that you wanted to, uh, to send yeah the floor yes, is yours of course so uh, my name is Ilvi and I will represent the group of the Van Hollarenstein University of Applied Sciences from Leeuwarden. Uh, I'm in a group with five other girls, uh, Wijke, Els, Liv, Odette and Anke. And we are all students from the uh, Coastal and Marine Management Study Program. We're first and second year students. And our video mainly focuses on sanitization in the Wallensee area. But I think you've all noticed by seeing uh, the first part of the video already. Um, and yeah, we think it's a very interesting topic and we really enjoy talking to some farmers and some people uh, uh, that you can also hear in the video. Um, so yeah, we hope you uh, enjoyed the video already by seeing it uh, and mainly that we inspire you to uh, well get to know a little bit more about salinization and uh, well, the fact that it's playing an increasingly large in, uh, in the Netherlands and in many parts in the world actually right now. So my introduction. Imagine yourself at a dining table in a nice restaurant. The waiter comes over and puts your plate before you. A plate filled with potatoes, seaweed lettuce and a burger made from algae. This might be the future. Temperatures on earth are rising worldwide, gradually causing a depletion of groundwater resources and therefore an increasing saline contamination of soils inland. Ocean temperatures are also rising, and current projections on the global mean sea levels predict a rise of around 1 meter. The rising ocean water pushes salty water onshore along coastlines, which causes salinization. Salinization includes an increase in the salinity of soil, groundwater and surface water. This has started playing an increasingly large role in the land surrounding the Wadden Sea, a world heritage site with unique geological and ecological values. Dutch farmers living close to the Wadden Sea will have to prepare how to respond to the increasing salinity of their soil. And salinization is only one of the changes brought on by climate change. Hans Krootsma is a Dutch farmer who has already slightly noticed some changes caused by climate change. You see well that it here langzamerhand warmer wordt and that it allemaal wat wat nou ja, het groeisseizoen inderdaad vooral wat langer is en dat dat 
Ja, dat, dat, dat merk je wel. Ja. Harry Veenstra en Jonny Belsma, who are both engaged in water-related topics in coastal areas, including the Wadden Sea, are also aware of the rising problem of salinization and shared their thoughts on the topic. Nou, je merkt ook dat de mensen er meer aandacht voor hebben, het algemene publiek. Mm. Net zoals verzilting een paar jaar geleden, dan zou je zou elke boer hier verzilting hebben en nooit van gehoord, daar hebben we geen last van. Maar ja. Nu praat iedereen daarover. Dus. Ja, ook de, de zoetwatervoorziening in Burgen, mm -hmm. die, heeft, die pompt nu al zout water op. Oké. Okay, uh... Dus uh, zo ver gaat het het binnenland al. Ja. Ja, de boer kan heel slecht herkennen of het om droogteschade schade of, of zoutschade. Dat lijkt qua uh... bruine vlekken die je in het land ziet mm -hmm. in de beplanting. Dat is heel slecht te zien of het uh, zout of, uh, okay. of droogte schade is. De zilte teelt, dat is er voorlopig nog niet helemaal klaar. Ja. Dat, 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 zo ver zijn we nog niet. Nee. En die markt is ook nog niet zo ver. Mm. He, maar dus wat je voor de korte termijn zou moeten doen, is uh, waterbeschikbaarheid daarop inzetten. Dus dat je als boer uh, uh, water vasthoudt, of dat nou in de bodem is of in het oppervlaktewater. Ja. Maar dat je dat kunt gebruiken voor, uh, voor infiltratie. Ja. He, uh, uh, irrigatie of infiltratie of uh, drainage. Ja. Eigenlijk moet je beide doen. Eigenlijk moet je beide doen. Ja, Verzilting ook een kans is voor nieuwe dingen. Hmm. Dat je niet als een bedreiging moet zien, maar dat je moet zien van uh, hoe gaan we met z'n allen zorgen dat we hier in de toekomst kunnen blijven wonen en werken in dat gebied. Ja. Dat het gaat op een manier zoals het nu gaat, daar weten we al van dat dat eindig is. Hmm. Maar je moet nu alvast gaan inzetten om uh, de bedreiging die op je afkomt, hè, de verzilting, om, om daarop in te spelen. Ja. Ja. En dat moet nu gebeuren. Nu is het het moment om daar, uh, daarmee aan de slag te gaan. En niet afwachten totdat het over je heen komt. En we're back. Uh, thanks a lot. Great video. Uh, sorry for a bit of a technical difficulties. Uh, I think we can... Uh, have any questions to uh, Ilvi and of course uh, Odette, Wijke, Els and Anke. Uh, you get some uh, some congratulations in the in the chat uh, of course. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if there are any questions of the audience. We try to have it as uh, interactive as possible. So um, uh, feel free to put it in the chat and otherwise we go uh, to Hannah. Uh, of course you're, you're in the studio here. Uh, what was your perception of this video? Uh, any comments or uh, yes i think this is a really important, important. aspect of course of uh, adapting to the sea uh, saline, agriculture. saline agriculture how are you managing with uh, salty grounds because in our video we very romantically say yeah we can all live, yeah, can all live on, on high, 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 high living grounds and we just live with the sea that floods the surroundings but that also of course um, means that you have to think of a whole different way of adapting to that agriculture and, and the way you will sustain yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, of course, uh, this video is really about salt water intrusion, a, a, a big problem. And that's actually what the, the jury said about this video as uh, being uh, one of the strong points. Oh, so, uh, that's great. Um, maybe any uh, comments of you, uh, Hannah, before we uh, give you even more the floor to introduce your video and start that one. So, uh... Uh, yes, I think it was a very wonderful video that showed that each country has its different challenges in climate change. And before I moved here to the Netherlands, I've never heard of salinization of the ground. And it was a very really new um, issue for me. And I think it's um, wonderful that uh, we could show a bit of the issue that is particularly Dutch in a way in the context of climate change. Um, and I think it's super interesting and um, I think it's great to show uh, to the audience because maybe even though you're Dutch or from another country, maybe you weren't aware, maybe you feel like looking into your own country's um, climate change struggle. So I think uh, that's a good approach to take. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, well, I think we, we already see that we have uh, three different uh, videos, of course. Uh, uh, logically, it's a different origin. Uh, this is about salt water. It's about uh, the Wadensee, where we actually uh, started. So now we uh, slowly move to... Um, uh, oh, sorry, I, I do see a question now. So uh, uh, there's a question from uh, uh, Marike. Uh, Ilvi, does uh, salination of the soil pose any problems to food uh, availability? So um, you can, of course, answer in the question uh, in the chat, or otherwise we uh, pick it up maybe uh, later. Maybe a, a short uh, response for that uh, from my uh, side. Uh, 
uh, one of the greatest thing we saw maybe on the drone uh, already in this region. We see uh, that we have to adapt to uh, food production. We have more saltwater intrusion in this area, but of course also on the islands, also in the uh, North Holland uh, region or South Holland and Zeeland, of course, where we have a lot of salt and uh, farmers are changing, of course, their patterns, their, their uh, crops uh, to be more uh, salt resistant. And, uh, and that's very inspiring uh, to see. So. Um, not sure about the uh, technical, but I think we should uh, go to uh, Hanna uh, and Ilvi. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Marike, for uh, for thanking us. And uh, please respond as well to this question in the chat. We try to make it uh, as interactive uh, as possible. For uh, the floor, I would uh, suggest that we slowly move from the Wannensee to salt uh, intrusion to the city, uh, slowly to Groningen, because that's the, the great uh, uh, thing about these three videos. They're, they're quite uh, different. So maybe, um, Hanna, mm -hmm. uh, a short introduction from your side. What did your team make? And uh, feel free to introduce uh, anything that you want to say. Uh, yeah, yeah, so um, as I already mentioned, um, I represent students from the Hans University of Applied Sciences. And together with Jack Jan, Yuri, Thomas, and Snow, um, we worked on a pitch video um, focusing on water-related issues in an urban area. Um, and that was um, specifically interesting um, because every one of us lives in a city. <laughs> um, and sometimes you're not really aware of the struggles that uh, climate change can actually oppose to you and how much of a risk uh, there is actually in your life and in our video we wanted to highlight that from a citizen perspective and we wanted to not only educate people on the topic but also to give uh, kind of a nudge to take action and to uh, be active and think about it and um, we also were lucky um, to get some drone shots by Mark Schrömann as um, the first group and um, I think we came up with a with the if I may say so myself very nice video <laughs> and uh, yeah I'm excited for you to see it. All right. Oh, I think that's a great introduction. So uh, can we show the third video, please? Yeah. Okay. Imagine the damage heavy rain and flooding can cause to your belongings and loved ones. Due to climate change, this is one of the biggest challenges we're facing in the 21st century. This global problem affects you and your neighborhood as well. The majority of Dutch citizens lives in a city, which is complex and dynamic. However, as climate change is a collective issue, there's great potential for climate adaptation if citizens and the government work together. A deep understanding of people's motivations to engage in climate adaptation is important in order to facilitate collaboration between the citizens and the government. Dutch cities are made up of 40% public and 60% private areas. This includes industrial spaces. The government is responsible for keeping the city safe from water-related problems. This means making the cities more climate adaptive. This can be done in three tasks. First, enough water. Second, water safety. And third, clean water. Water problems in industrial areas occur while there is a lot of stone materials causing the sewage system to overflow. Making industrial areas more green and water absorbing, just like this, is a great chance to collect rainwater. You can use it to flush toilets or for cooling installations. So that's profitable for the city. As for the citizens, it is important to raise awareness about the climate issues and measures they can take. Artwork uses dynamic sound, colors and images to raise awareness and inspire the public to take actions. All the green you add in your garden is a win for your comfort, a win for the safety of your neighborhood and thus a win for us all. With the help in a private space, small steps for you become big steps for the city. And you're not alone on this because the government can support you with information on how to implement the measures and they have subsidies to support you financially. Next to that, check on how you can collaborate with your local government to make your neighborhoods more climate adaptive. Think globally, act locally.
What will you do? Uh, as you could see, I placed uh, some links, uh, uh, of course, in the in the chat. So you can always uh, review the the videos in this case. So uh, and I hope you do, but not now, of course, because we can have a, a bit of uh, uh, of course interaction. Uh, the video stopped there, uh, Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening next? We're we're very exciting to know <laughs> how this video would uh, end. Can so, you tell something about that? Yes, Sorry. of course. So um, the rest of the video. Um, goes more and more into the city and uh, it ends with a call for action uh, to you, the youth, uh, and you as citizens. Um, so we really wanted to highlight um, or show in the video, we, we will show how the government um, actually can support you as a citizen in behaving in a climate adaptive way. And there are already some um, uh, implementations done in the Netherlands, some subsidies from the government, for example, and that's shown in the video. And um, it ends uh, yeah, with a call for action and um, highlights you as a citizen, as an important stakeholder in climate adaptation. So I think that's kind of the end message um, that you are, are very important. And um, by working together with the government, we can accomplish great things and that there's great potential. Amazing. <laughs> so we don't actually uh, have to have see the video. You can just <laughs> tell about it very lively, and uh, and that's uh, and that's fine too. So and uh, of course we we had uh, some sessions about the videos, making the videos with with Sandra as well. You you've seen the video. Is there any response uh, from your side to the video or questions or anything you wanna um, interact? Yes, I like the way how you um, approach the problem from, of course, all the different uh, areas you see in life, like the industries, but also uh, neighborhoods and actually individual people, what, what they can do and what they can do together. Um, so could you explain to me how exactly um, like the, the things you can do as a person, mm. like apparently making your garden greener, yeah. how does that directly impact the water problems? So, of course, it's a very abstract thought to think, oh, if I make my grass, uh, my garden greener, that's uh, immediately going to impact something, but it is about volume. So if all citizens do a bit, a bit by bit, step by step, we can make the city greener collectively. So I think that's the most important message here that um, even though your step might seem small in the in the long run, if everyone collectively does the same, it, it can lead to great impacts. And um, there are uh, subsidies in the Netherlands, uh, or in Honinger, for example, um, where you can remove uh, tiles from your garden and they will help you dispose them or you will get some subsidies if you make a, a, a roof greener. So there's a lot of things that you can do and um, uh, what you do impacts had, has great impact, actually. Nice. Yeah, great. Yeah. So um, I actually can't see any questions in the in the chat. So if that uh, could be uh, maybe uh, provided to me, uh, that, that would be uh, would be nice. There's uh, from uh, Wijke a comment uh, in the in the chat uh, about the interviews they made with the uh, with the farmers. Might be nice that uh, when we uh, showed the videos to the the jury, in this case uh, uh, German uh, municipalities participating in the in the new. EU project uh, uh, and also uh, water authorities that uh, they really appreciate the interaction in the videos. So the interviews with the farmers and of course the interaction between uh, yourselves as well being uh, interdisciplinary and uh, raising uh, different topics of uh, climate adaptation. Uh, not only uh, salinity of course but also floodings and heat stress and the, the major challenges that we face in, uh, in this uh, area. And that's quite nice uh, of course to see uh, what this uh, what this brings and especially from the interviews and the farmers I can read this from the chat is that uh, of course they working towards more uh, sustainable uh, crops and uh, of course lean uh, agriculture and it's quite exciting to see that actually in this region uh, uh, one of the regions as a potato valley they call it uh, if you say that in English and now I think everyone is looking at Ohio which is the potato state uh, in uh, in the USA, of course. So, um, um, uh, Eileen asked, uh, what are possible crops that can be grown on uh, salinated uh, soil? Uh, also flax and uh, hemp, for example. Uh, that's another question probably to you to answer, but feel free to do so. 
but <laughs> well, my expertise isn't really on uh, yeah. on agriculture that much but i did read an article while i was researching um about certain potato strains that will do very well in saline uh, uh saline areas yeah well actually potato is very sweet crop um because of recent technologies and and how we can actually make new potato strains it could actually be possible yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, and I see that uh, Mindert uh, is uh, coming to a help as well, as I explained from VHL, one of the uh, originators of this uh, this session on Climate Cafe, of course. He, uh, he of course, uh, well, he says uh, beets and carrots and potatoes. Uh, and of course, the, the varieties m- must be uh, quite more uh, resistant uh, to that. So, um, well, we have uh, 10 minutes left. Uh, it will be good to, uh, to close off uh, uh, maybe with the last comments, of course for you to the viewers to uh, to say so maybe something about the the, the jury i mentioned um uh, it was uh, quite nice to have uh, five uh, people from the jury watching uh, all the videos uh, they commented uh, uh, very enthusiastic uh, they want to use the videos uh, in uh, the new uh, project uh, that we're starting up uh, in the Ames Dollard gebied uh, as i explained uh, the Wadersee uh, region for example also with Mindert we're working on more proposals to work more together on uh, on the international knowledge exchange in this uh, region we, we, which is uh, really nice uh, one of the topics, of course, having uh, a climate uh, adaptation summit with uh, students is very important. They're the ambassadors of the future, of course, uh, and that uh, makes them realize that uh, there's uh, in these projects a certain type of dissemination, uh, capacity building, uh, raising awareness where we really want to uh, uh, stimulate youth to give their message uh, across. And the great thing is if you ask a municipality and we ask private partners, and we, we asked uh, public partners uh, to uh, to review the videos and, and make a bit of a ranking. Uh, it's uh, obvious that people have a different opinion. And that's great because there are uh, different uh, views, there are different uh, people, different organizations working on different fields. So we made a, a very difficult calculation to do the ranking. And actually, uh, that's something that uh, uh, a jury always starts with. It was very difficult. And in this case, th- there was no ranking, actually. Okay. So everybody had uh, a very good view, and especially uh, some more theoretical, some uh, really appreciated, the, of course, the, the interaction, as, uh, as mentioned, with the farmers as well. So we did decided to give you all the floor to uh, participate in this uh, n- new project which is quite exciting because we just got the news uh, uh, yesterday so uh, it's a climb uh, pair it's called with a lot of municipalities from germany also from groningen and uh, water authorities and of course the applied universities and the, the groningen university as well so uh, and i will give you the short vid back on the video that uh, the the different people so but they're very positive and that's that's really great to, to to see so i think uh when we close off well before we close off it might be nice to mention that after this uh hannah is gonna stay uh not because she's very excited but she has a session uh with a lot of uh, uh, uh stakeholders i think that's in dutch yeah. so i'm i'm really excited to see how you will <laughs> <Me> <laughs> cope with that can you maybe explain uh, because the next session uh, people can uh, stick around of course uh, what, what is that session about i heard it's about uh, uh, politics it's yeah. art so very various uh, exactly you know. um so the next session uh, will be a talk show um which is kind of focusing on three um topics um so we have politics art and kind of behavior and uh, since I am uh, a graduate in social uh, applied social psychology, I will be talking a bit about how um, behavior or behavior change can take place in the context of climate adaptation and climate change. And uh, throughout the past year, uh, as an intern at the Innovation Lab here in Groningen, I gathered some insights into how municipalities can, for example, engage citizens in climate adaptation and how municipalities can uh, motivate citizens to engage in climate adaptation. And I think it's going to be very interesting and I am very excited. (laughs) Great. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Well, I think uh, already in, in uh, well, we're closing up, of course, uh, Minder is, of course, uh, well, he's responding in the chat. Uh, uh, I already uh, told him so everybody could see that I uh, really miss you here on stage. It would be great if we could I miss you. Uh, I miss you too, Flores. Very good uh, come back uh, from him as well in the new project. There's you cannot hear me. <laughs> uh, some of you, uh, when the project is really uh, going to start, might uh, graduate, but uh, it's also about young professionals. So, uh, indeed, uh, comment from Minder to we can all uh, participate and uh, let's see if we can uh, really uh, start uh, uh, focusing now and I see Eileen Blackmore in the chat and some uh, actually uh, uh, partners that are in the project so that's quite exciting but I think we uh, should slowly go to a conclusion of this uh, session um, maybe some uh, last, wor uh, last words from you Sandra to uh, to give you the floor um well in my opinion it's it's very clear that we're now in a kind of long-term transition in how we will deal with our climate change in Groningen in the Netherlands and I think it's very exciting to hear all these different outlooks on how we'll do that and how they can all interact very very nicely I think it's certainly a message of hope perfect thank you so much and then uh, last but not least uh, Hannah uh, yeah, I also think, uh, adding to what you said, that uh, I hope that this session today could give you give you a bit of hope as well as insights into um, how uh, climate change is affecting the Netherlands and how climate adaptation is already taking place. And um, I uh, hope that you feel inspired to uh, look some things up, to um, gain a deeper understanding of, of what's happening around you. And um, I think that uh, an event like today is a wonderful thing. And I think it's great that you all participated. Nice. Yeah. So uh, what can I say more, of course? Uh, it's great that you have been here so much. Uh, thanks to you, of course, and Ilvi uh, uh, joining us for the chat. I think you made the amazing work with these videos and uh, we can really be proud as organizations, uh, the Applied University, VHL, Hans, uh, and of course the RUG, but also everybody who participated uh, just to thank, uh, of course, Minder de Vries from VHL, who was very supportive in making the videos. Uh, Mark, as you mentioned, uh, the the guy with the drone, so to say, uh, made uh, amazing footage that we can use for new projects as well as the climate pair that I mentioned. I would like to mention the jury, uh, not mentioning the names, but uh, I think you uh, uh, have seen your feedback in this uh, session as well. Uh, uh, Johan Oost, of course, from VetSkills, uh, thank you so much for supportive and making the pitches uh, and uh, very clear vi videos on this. So uh, I hope I don't uh, forget anyone, but uh, well, thanks again. Let's close this sessions we will make the videos available of course and i hope uh, you had a lot of fun and will stay with us uh, see hannah for example at the uh, viral dry door in the next session so uh, thank you so much and of course the technicians here all around us uh, thanks a lot and i hope to see you soon bye <laughs>